Hello, and welcome to AIC Vision. AIC Vision is a weekly news program produced by the Alternative Information Center, a joint Palestinian-Israeli organization in Beit Sahur in Jerusalem. I'm Katherine Anderson. Today we head to the West Bank village of al Walaja and discuss issues of land confiscation and the growth of West Jerusalem. Then, Nassar Ibrahim with a special report on Syria, but first, the top news. Several attacks on Palestinians this week bring into question tolerance and support for hate crimes among mainstream Israeli Jews. While civilian violence by Jewish settlers toward West Bank Palestinians is framed as extremist and goes largely ignored, many Israelis feel the recent lynching of three Palestinian youths by a large mob of Israeli miners in West Jerusalem highlights the need for reflection. The event also demonstrates how racial violence, mostly normalized in the West Bank, leaks into city life. A timely new report by the U.S. State Department labels settler attacks on Palestinians as terrorism. This recognition makes remarks by a 15-year-old lynching suspect, quote, for my part he can die, he's an Arab, unquote, all the more poignant. Arrests have and continue to be made from the dozens of Jewish Israeli children involved and responsible for the Jerusalem lynching. Hundreds of bystanders stood by and watched as a horde of Jewish Israeli teenagers rushed and assaulted three Palestinian boys. The attack left Jamal Julani of East Jerusalem's Ra's al Ahmoud neighborhood brutally beaten and unconscious. Julani survived the attack. So far, no charges have been pressed. Hours before the lynching last Thursday, Jewish settlers near the West Bank settlement of Bat Ein attacked a Palestinian taxi with a firebomb. This explosion left six members of the Abu Jayada family severely burned. They are currently hospitalized in Jerusalem. The Army issued hospital visitation permits expired on Wednesday, though victims could be hospitalized for up to another month. The Israeli Army refuses to renew the permits. The Abu Jayada family are West Bank residents and therefore barred from entering Jerusalem. No arrests in the attack have been made. Moreover, in recent days, the right-wing organization SOS Israel distributed flyers to young Palestinians in Jerusalem. The leaflet distributed warns Arabs to, quote, stay away from Jewish girls or you'll be hurt like the Arab who was injured last week, unquote. Lastly, staff from the Union of Agricultural Work Committees, UAWC, a grassroots Palestinian organization working to defend farmers' land and produce, has been arrested by the military, Israeli military. On July 31st, Dr. Moyad Ahmad Bisharat, the coordinator of UAWC's Jericho office, was abducted at dawn from his home. The UAWC office in Jericho was ransacked by Israeli forces who confiscated computers, laptops, and files. On Wednesday, the union demanded an immediate end to the targeting of union members and all Palestinian farmers and agricultural workers. Following a recent release of two UAWC staff from military detention, UAWC board member Ahmad Sufan was given a third term of six months of administrative detention. Administrative detention is detention without charge or trial. He has already served a year in prison without legal recourse. UAWC claims these targeted attacks are part of a broader Israeli campaign to parcel off Palestinians' land for future Israeli use. UAWC described these government tactics as working in tandem with settler violence, violence that targets Palestinian farmers. In the past week alone, settlers have chopped down olive trees in the South Hebron Hills, stoned Palestinian cars, and attempted to set fire to a home outside Nablus. In today's film segment, Johanna Montanari and Daniel Vyand explore Al Walaja Stories of Land Confiscation, West Bank, Summer of 2012. Uh, my name is Omar Hajajla. Uh, over there is my house. I am the owner. I, uh, my family is five people. Me and my, my wife, three sons. Uh, 
the Israeli and such is want to build electric fence for the round for the house. Uh, and uh, you see it do with this tunnel. This tunnel just I can to go for the village because the electric fence was closed around the house, the same for the jail, small jail for small family. Uh, this, is, this is the occupation. Ahmed Barghout. My name is Ahmed Barghout. Lajit Palestini. I am Palestinian refugee. I'm living now uh, of the rest, on the rest of the land after 48. And the uh, occupation is following us to take the rest, what we have. And they stole our land. And, this, and it's, the land is the most important thing for us because we are a farmer. Uh, the land for the way in the village, in this village, in the village, village it's at uh, 12,000 dunum before the walls. After the wall, 2,200 dunum. I have here 35 dunums. After the electric fence and to finish the wall, just only leave it for me, just only half dunum. The village, the settlement is for his round, the round. But why the, the Israeli government is want the village land? Because the village, it's the first village behind Jerusalem. Because this very nice land. And 90% of my land, it's outside or in the Israeli side. Of the world. And the family cemetery, it's mm -hmm. outside in the Israeli side. And the, there, it's my grandma, grandfather, father, and mom graves. It's in the Israeli side. And it's supposed to demolish it, but he went to the high court. Uh, so it's now inside the Israeli uh, side, but and, and they built for me tunnel, two meter by two meter, just to enter to visit my family graves. And it's the promise. If they will do it or no, I don't know. If somebody who want to come, friends, or somebody who want to come in my house to... Uh, uh, who can to come just only in the morning. Six in the morning and six in the evening. After the six evening, after 6 p.m., I want to talk with him to leave it. Who can to stay in my house. In my house, after 6 p.m., just me and my family. Nobody who can to stay in the house. If somebody who stay in here, the guy, the Israeli, the policeman who's come, take it him for the jail. The Israeli just want I to leave it. I leave it my house and leave it my land. But uh, I don't think she I leave it. For this my for for the life I want just only my house. I want my son. And my uh, children who stay here in my house, in my land, this is what I may want. I don't want anything. I don't want money. I don't want anything. This is for the last, this is Palestinian land. And finally, to Syria, the danger of foreign intervention and how the situation in Syria affects the Palestinian struggle. Here is Palestinian analyst and writer Nassar Ibrahim. Uh, we, I would like to uh, to talk today about what's going on in Syria, especially in light the uh, the propaganda which talk about the events in Syria as it's a revolution or rebellion, which uh, concentrate on achieving the uh, democracy and the human rights uh, for Syria. 
but uh, I would like to clarify. Sometimes I feel during my talk with many internationals, they are confusing regards these slogans and terms. Uh, what we mean when we talk about democracy and human rights and social change in the Arab countries. Sometimes uh, the people retain, they retain these terms to uh, the meaning of democracy in the Western country. But in the Arab world and in Syria, uh, as what's happening today, we understand these terms in a different way. It's really, it has uh, meaning regards the individual's freedoms, uh, free expressions for the people, the political rights, uh, the political freedoms, social freedoms, economic freedoms, it's okay. But also we must understand uh, also the, 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 the position or the status of the states which means we can separate the internal democracy and the human rights aspects and the change far away from also the independence of our states and our uh, societies. Uh, this, is, this point is very important for uh, us. Meanwhile, we are fighting and struggling in Syria or in Egypt or in any Arab country to be free as individuals and as a social and community, we must be careful that also our state must be independent and sovereign state. For that, many they don't understand why the people they are against the revolution in Syria, inside Syria, the majority of the Syrian people they are against because they saw that the external intervention will destroy their sovereignty and independence state and they are attracting the Syrian state to be a puppet state or a banana state in the hands of the colonial uh, forces. Uh, I think this uh, point is very important to, to understand the reaction of the Syrian people, the reaction of the uh, Syrian society and the Arab intellectual and the Arab secular movement because we are paying over history a high price because our states in the, as, as the Gulf countries or as Egypt during Hosni Mubarak or Zain al-Abidin bin Ali, they were toys in the hands of the external forces. And uh, we can't, for that we can't separate the change far away from to, to protect the role and the freedom of the national state in our uh, region. And uh, we can separate the external freedom and the external uh, rights or, uh, for the people from the internal rights for the same people in the same uh, country. This one point. The other point, also we can separate the, the internal needs of the people to change far away from the external challenges such as what's the role or what's the position regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We can't close our eyes. Meanwhile, the people or the sides or the powers who are trying to change in, in, in the Arab society, such as Syria or Egypt or any other, without understanding from them what they will do regarding the conflict and regarding the Israeli occupation on, in, in, in Palestine. What their program to, to, to end this uh, occupation. And uh, based on that, we we'll decided the processes of change. And we can understand all this dimension when we look now to the reality on the ground. Because we will see that uh, mainly all the slogan regards the human rights and social change and democracy and freedom almost disappeared from the propaganda. And the, 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 the external forces, especially the Gulf countries and the Western countries, they are concerned on how to destroy Syria as a state. For that, their target is to destroy the state and the, 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 and the system. And that will destroy all the slogans regarding human rights and, society, and, and, and freedom inside Syria. We don't need the change to lead us to, for destruction or to divide Syria. For that, it's mainly uh, a, a, a main goal for us to, to, to achieve the social change in all levels and the freedoms and all the human rights for the, the, the Syrian people and in the same time to protect the unity of the society, the unity of the state, the achievement of the Syrian people over history and the state to be sovereign and to be also against or anti-colonial and anti-occupation. This is, uh, for me, it's an important point to understand 
uh, what's going on in Syria and how we can approach the, the events in Syria. This was AIC Vision. I'm Katherine Anderson, broadcasting from Jerusalem. Thank you very much for joining us.